Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing a full end-to-end -end review of a budget-friendly sub $400 electric scooter that's got a host of features that allows it to punch above its weight class. And that's particularly exciting for me because a lot of sub $400 electric scooters don't have a lot in the way of bells and whistles. So after Chroma Scooters reached out to me asking if I'd be open to reviewing their E68 Pro electric scooter, I took a look at the stat sheet, saw some pretty standout features, and decided, yes, 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 send it on over. And after about a week or so, it arrived at my doorstep. It's important to note that while I received this scooter at no cost, my review is entirely independent, and my thoughts, conclusions, and opinions are my own. So, without further delay, let's jump into the details. I'm happy to say that the E68 Pro came to my doorstep in really good condition. Aside from a little trim piece that wasn't quite flush with the frame, everything else was in good working order. The scooter was packaged in really high quality foam and assembly was basically taking the scooter out of the box, extending the kickstand, unfolding the stem and latching it into place, and then unfolding the seat, which yes, this scooter comes with a seat, uh, and then locking that into place and then attaching the handlebars. That's it, total assembly time was less than 10 minutes. Now, one thing that got me particularly excited about this scooter is the fact that it comes with a 48 volt system. A lot of budget-friendly scooters, and even commuter scooters, typically come standard with 36 volt systems. So the benefit of having that extra voltage means more torque, more acceleration, uh, and less voltage sag, all else being equal. And if you're not familiar with voltage sag on a lot of scooters, once you get past uh, that 50%, so you're basically in the bottom half uh, of the battery, uh, you're gonna see you know, power drop off quite a bit and you won't be able to hit those top speeds. So with 48 volt systems relative to 36 volt systems, you'll have less of that voltage sag. The Coroma E68 Pro is equipped with a 500 watt brushless electric motor capable of cranking out 819 peak watts. The battery on board is a 48 volt, 7.8 amp hour, 374 watt hour lithium ion battery, which you can charge up in approximately five and a half hours with the 1.5 amp charger. Granted, this scooter doesn't have the biggest battery in the world at 7.8 amp hours, but I'll tell you what, it absolutely surprised me on the range test, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now, in terms of tires, the Coroma E68 Pro comes equipped with 10 inch by 2.45 inch solid rubber tires. Now, solid tires aren't nearly as comfortable as their air filled counterparts, but they have one significant advantage, no flat tires. Flat tires on a scooter can be an absolute pain, especially if you're trying to change one on the side of the road. So if low maintenance is an important criteria for you, solid tires may be a viable option. So now that we've talked about tires, let's talk about ride comfort. The Coroma E68 Pro is the first scooter I've ridden with solid tires since Razor released their little aluminum scooters back in 2000. When riding on smooth asphalt and pavement, the ride is very smooth. It's when you start riding on rougher surfaces that things get a little choppy. Now, the E68 Pro does include a basic coil spring and rubber horizontal suspension mechanism in the rear, which does help dampen some of the bumps in the road. Now, it's not a plush suspension, but it does help improve riding comfort. I took this scooter on an hour plus long range test, which to be honest with you, was over mostly smooth asphalt and pavement, and riding on those surfaces was quite pleasant. It's only when you get into, you know, kind of the rougher terrain, you know, poorly paved, uh, asphalt that things get a little rough. In terms of speed, Coroma claims that the E68 Pro can get upwards of 20 miles an hour. This scooter does have three speed modes that you can ride in. Mode one can reach 10 miles an hour, mode two can reach 15.5 miles an hour, and mode three can take you up to 20 miles an hour. In my testing, I was able to reach the top speed of 20 miles an hour as measured by the draggy performance monitor. On a full charge, I could accelerate to 15 miles an hour in 10.42 seconds, 18 miles an hour in 15.3 seconds, and 20 miles an hour in 20.1 seconds. In terms of acceleration, the Coroma isn't the fastest thing in the world, but it doesn't have an issue getting to its specified top speed of 20 miles an hour, even with a rider like myself over 200 pounds. One area of testing that really surprised me was range. Coroma claims the E68 Pro can get up to 25 miles on a single charge. Now, given its battery capacity at 7.8 amp hours, I expected somewhere in the ballpark of 12 to 14 miles of range, riding around in the highest speed mode. Surprisingly, I was able to squeeze out over 17 miles of range over an hour and 10 minute ride with an average moving speed of 15 miles an hour. 
Not bad for a sub $400 scooter carrying a 203 pound rider. Another thing to note about that range test is that I was able to maintain 20 miles an hour all the way up until about 15% battery remaining. After that, my speed dropped to around 18 miles an hour, and it was only when I was on the last leg of that battery that things really start slowing down. So, 48 volt system, lower uh, voltage sag, definitely has an advantage over 36 volt systems. If you live in a place with a lot of hills, you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to this section. Coroma claims that the E68 Pro can climb inclines up to 20 degrees. Keep in mind that Coroma bases these numbers on tests of lighter weight riders in ideal conditions. In my test, I could ride up a parking garage that was approximately seven degrees or 12.3% grade with a running start. Now, the scooter struggled towards the top, but ultimately was able to pull through. Based on this testing, the Coroma E68 Pro is gonna be best suited for flat ground all the way up to light hills. If you live in a place like San Francisco or foothills of the Rocky Mountains, where you've got a lot of uh, steep terrain, this is probably not gonna be the scooter for you. One place where this scooter really shines is gonna be its 360 degree lighting. The E68 Pro comes equipped with a headlight, tail light, brake light, and ambient blue lighting along both sides of the deck. You can set the blue ambient light to fade in and out while riding or have it activated while braking, during which it rapidly flashes to bring more attention to you. The lighting setup on the E68 Pro isn't something that we typically see in this price point, so kudos to Coroma for going the extra mile and ensuring maximum rider visibility at night. My favorite part about the E68 Pro has got to be its control setup. All buttons and levers are well within reach of the handlebars, meaning I can focus on riding and not fiddling with controls. I can't tell you how many times I've ridden scooters where the manufacturer decides to put the main control button on the LCD screen. The problem with that is that if you need to change drive modes or turn on the headlight, you've got to release your hand from one of the handlebars, which is a huge no-no, and then reach down and hit that button, and then go ahead and put your hand back on the handlebar if you haven't fallen already. Uh, so huge shout out to Coroma for putting the controls within reach of your thumbs. Uh, from the control pad on this scooter, you can control uh, the ride modes, you can uh, control the headlight, and you can also do one button cruise control, which is huge. There are a lot of scooters out there that you know rely on holding the throttle in a very specific position for five or six seconds or double clicking something to engage uh, cruise control. On the Coroma, simply hit the button on the control pad for cruise control and cruise control is gonna be on at whatever speed you're going at that moment. In terms of braking, the E68 Pro has a drum brake up front and an electronic regenerative brake in the rear. I would characterize the braking performance of this scooter as being adequate. Uh, I definitely recommend planning out your stops, and if you do need to stop on a dime, I highly recommend you know engaging that uh, brake lever while simultaneously leaning back, even getting a little bit low. That'll help maximize the braking power and also help ensure that you don't go over those handlebars. Now I can't talk about the E68 Pro without mentioning the seat that it comes with. Now admittedly, this is the first scooter I've ever ridden that has a seat. With the adjustable handlebar height, you can use this scooter in a seated or standing position. The seat comes pre-installed and is height adjustable. And I'll tell you, it was strange at first riding a scooter in a seated position, but after a couple of laps around the block, I could see why someone would want such a thing. It is very relaxed position to ride in. And although I really did like it, I decided to remove it so I can test it out as I do all my other scooters in a standing position. And removing it is quite simple. Simply pull out the four hex screws, uh, pop off the shims on either side, and you can lift the seat right off the scooter and you can go store that in a safe place. In terms of weight and portability, the E68 Pro weighs in at 39.5 pounds without the seat and 44.2 pounds with the seat. Because the E68 Pro is a folding scooter, you can simply unlatch the stem, fold it down and latch it into the place at the rear fender. Uh, and if you're using that seat, uh, you can also lower the seat and fold the seat as well. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about the handlebars on this scooter is that they are removable. And the way they remove is you simply push these two uh, spring-loaded buttons all the way into the hole and then you pull them out. Uh, very similar to those Razor scooters that you saw in the early 2000s. Being able to remove those handlebars makes it even more portable because a lot of times you can fold up a scooter but you still have these you know, super wide handlebars that you've got to position around 
With this, you pop them out, it's very easy to store. Now, the one downside of that is that there is about a millimeter of play in each direction on the handlebars, so if you're standing there playing with it, you can definitely feel it. Uh, the good news is that you don't feel that play when you're actually riding the scooter. If you were wondering about UL certification on this scooter, Coroma does state that the E68 Pro is UL2272 certified, which means that the entire electrical system on this scooter is certified to UL standards. So after all of that, here are the things that I absolutely love about the Coroma E68 Pro. Number one on my list has gotta be the control pad on the handlebars. All of the major functions of this scooter are accessible by your thumbs. You can change drive mode, you can engage cruise control, and you can turn your headlights on and change the lighting mode on the scooter all with your thumb. No need to remove your hands from the handlebars. Number two is gonna be the 360 degree lighting system on this scooter. Uh, a lot of scooters, especially in the budget category, have pretty weak uh, headlights and lighting overall. So it's nice to see that Chroma not only put a decent headlight on this scooter, but also brake lights, tail lights, as well as those accent lights on the side, which really do help with nighttime visibility. Number three on my list is the 48 volt system. That's not something you commonly see in budget electric scooters. So it's nice to have that extra torque that extra power uh, and then not have to worry as much about voltage sag and really losing power at the bottom half of that battery. Now the final thing on my list of things I love about this scooter has got to be the price. It is a budget friendly scooter with a sub $400 price tag at the time of filming this video. You can also apply coupon codes to bring the price even lower. So I will include coupons as well as links in the description below. And if you use those to purchase uh, this scooter it does help support this channel and keep the wheels moving on future reviews. Now that we've got the good stuff out of the way, what are the things that I think need improvement on the E68 Pro? Number one on my list here is gonna be those solid rubber tires. Uh, they are very low maintenance, you never have to worry about flats, but they aren't the most comfortable things on rough surfaces, so it'd be really nice to see an air-filled tire option on this scooter. Number two, that rear shock is very stiff. It's not plush like the suspensions that you see on some other scooters, uh, but it does help minimize some of the impact of bigger bumps in the road. It would just be nice to see a little bit more, you know, softness in that suspension. Number three is something I didn't really think of until I got off the scooter, but it's gonna be the turning radius of the scooter. So there were times that I needed to hop off the scooter and you know get it turned around on a sidewalk or something. And one thing I immediately noticed was the turning radius was pretty limited. I was like, wow, I feel like this thing should be able to go more to the left or to the right more. Uh, it is pretty limited. Uh, not gonna be a major issue at all when riding it, but if you do wanna hop off and you know do a 180 degree turn, um, you know, you will have to lift the back end of the scooter to turn it because the turning radius is pretty big. The last thing on the list of things that need improvement is gonna be the button noise when you press it. It is a really loud beep. I was actually riding around at night uh, a couple nights back and uh, I pushed that button. It's like, oh wow, this thing is really obnoxiously loud. So it would be nice to be able to turn the volume down on that or disable the audio altogether. So who do I think the Chroma E68 Pro is gonna be most suitable for? Well, this scooter is gonna be most suitable for somebody who's looking for something that's low maintenance, has ergonomically designed uh, controls, and has also got a scooter that's gonna be able to go the distance with extra power that you don't typically have in the budget segment. Overall, I think the E68 Pro is an excellent entry-level scooter for somebody who's looking to get a lot of bells and whistles for a relatively low price. The E68 Pro will definitely get you from point A to point B while also providing you with some creature comforts along the way. Now, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, whatever it might be, let me know in the comments below. I'll also include in the description some coupons as well as links to this scooter. So if you do decide to buy it and you use those links uh, and coupons, you can get a lower price and you can also help support this channel, which as I mentioned before, helps keep the wheels turning on future reviews. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.